Well, welcome everybody, and that's a joy to be together again. Pastor Scott, what's up, man? Nothing, Chris. What's up Nothing, with you? Nothing, Chris. We're just here on a delightful afternoon with Chantel a Poidmore. A lovely guest today. Yes. Very pregnant. Very pregnant so, very, very pregnant. <laughs> very pregnant with number four. 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 Number four. four. Boys. Four boys. Four, four boys. boys. Yeah. That and your, was guys. our scenario And your up. oldest is uh, yes, four. Yes. Your oldest is four. Just so turned four. That's a full like house. Like a couple weeks ago. <sighs> yes. Baby, literally, full getting fuller. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, God bless you guys. Thank you for giving us some time today. Very um, gracious. You're what at least we would call an influencer, oh. a social media influencer. I'm sure you love that title. <laughs> yes. uh, but we're here to talk a little bit about that. So why don't you take it away and uh, we'll just fill in with some. We're here to learn and ask yeah. some questions. So go ahead. Yeah, well, thanks guys for having me. This is kind of a cool opportunity. And I'm a little nervous because, well, I don't want to go into labor, but also <laughs> just, I don't know, There's this that. is just a, this is a big topic. And um, before I kind of dive in on, you know, just being a Christian and navigating social media, I thought I'd maybe mm. just give some, a brief background about myself and how I grew up and yeah. really how God kind of has paved this path for me, yeah. this social media, I guess. Um, so I'm born, I was born and raised in Chico, California, not too far from here, yeah. uh, born in a Christian home. I actually grew up around death and dying. My dad was mm. a funeral director, owned his own funeral home. So as a child, uh, we'd go to the funeral home a lot. I would have a lot of questions as a child, and we were v- just my dad was a very transparent father. Um, and being from a Christian home, it was a ministry for my family, yeah, which yeah. was really neat and mm. getting to see that. Cool. And so fast forward... Um, that's what I went to school for, actually. I went to Simpson University for a year. I took the Myers-Briggs test. And if I remember correctly, it gave me kind of a list of professions that I would be good at. Okay. Funeral service was one of them. And I was like, no way. No way. That's awfully specific. So it was very specific. Yeah. (laughs) And of course, my dad was excited. So anyway, (laughs) he was like, oh, someone's going to take over my (laughs) side of the business. And so anyway, I ended up going to mortuary school, graduated in 2009. Sorry, mortuary school. Mortuary school. Mortuary school. Mm -hmm. How how many of those are there? Not a lot. California, I think there's like two. One of them happens to be here in Sacramento. Are people happy to be at a school like that? Or are they like (laughs) very serious and somber? I'm actually very curious. you're say, into the science of it, and, you, into the and that's of what it, right? school is mostly for: yeah. is, the, is to become a licensed embalmer. You can become okay. a licensed funeral director with a, an associate science degree. Huh. Um, so I wanted to kind of get as many licenses as I could, and yeah. I was going to maybe succeed my dad in the business. And so um, it was a two and a half year program. Graduated. And at that time, as far as social media goes, I think I just had MySpace. Do you guys remember MySpace? I do. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, got my that- teeth on MySpace <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> but like MySpace was... Never, I never did it for the record. But uh, anyways, it was- go on. No judgment here. <laughs> just, I it was, was very late to the game. simple. I'm always late to the game. Don't worry about it. I think Keep I had going. like your picture is someone, like an actor that you like, and then you post songs, like music videos or oh, something. Yeah. I mean, it was oh, so yeah. simple, like yeah. the good old days. Right. Um, that was the extent of my social media at that time. Um, but after graduating mortuary school, I have two younger sisters that decided to sign me up for a reality show that I decided to go on, <laughs> not knowing what to expect at all. It was a dating show. I decided, I didn't, again, no social media at the time. Um, but I thought, you know what? I've graduated. Why not? It mm. could be a neat experience. Here I am, a Christian, understanding I'm going on a reality dating show. So, yeah. You know, I wanted to be careful, um, and God, looking back, so protected me from so much being on that show and as far as how far I went and everything, but mm. that kind of opened the door to a lot of, you know, um, I would, when I got off the show, I'd essentially Google myself and be like, what, what are people saying? Mm. And I wasn't as mature in my faith then okay. as I am now, so I really would let it get to me, and I thought, what did I just expose myself to? Right. And I didn't want to go on social media because I thought people are, they have such harsh things to say. And mm. so I kind of just left that alone, watched myself on this reality television show along with millions of other people, <laughs> let that just go, and then went back to work, and then a few years later met my husband, and we got married in 2013. Um and that's when I opened up an Instagram account and Facebook and kind of got more involved with social media. And then I 
started getting some followers from uh, the reality television show and right. people recognizing me from that. There's and a bit of a platform that kind of little came bit of a that. Platform. Almost like the Lord had started to set this up before. Yes. It's kind of where, okay, yes. I get what you're saying. And thankfully, I started to mature more in my faith at that time, especially after meeting my husband. Um, and then we started to go to Doxa a few years after getting married. And then I started really opening up on um, social media. But I also grew up, I know we didn't get really into it, but with my family and the funeral industry and stuff. Mm. We were very transparent, very open family. So I just kind of naturally just shared everything I liked, um, my kids, but my marriage, I mean, really into my home. Mm. Um, and I dabble into like, here's some scripture here, you know, things like that. But for the most part, it was just things that I just liked. Um, and then when we, we're trying to get pregnant with our first son or our first child. We went through IVF. We were unexplained infertility. And I decided to talk about it very openly on Publicly. social media. Uh, okay, got it. Yes. And I didn't know what was going to come out of it. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be modest about it, but I also wanted to be open because I knew it was something that other friends of mine had struggled with. And so I thought, I know I'm not the only one. And mm, yeah. so that kind of opened up some doors to some... Uh, moms or some women that would reach out and I would be able to share and talk with them all virtually on social media. And then we got pregnant with our son, thankfully through IVF. And then when we got pregnant naturally with our second son, Leo, um, we had no idea, but he was born with a port wine stain that covers half of his face. And he was born with a rare disease called Sturge Weber syndrome. And so now about this time, as far as social media goes, I had about 5,000 followers, which I was like, whoa, that's a lot. Seems like I mean, a it lot. Seems, yeah. yeah and, sure. mm-hmm. But then after I, I decided to post a picture of Leo's sweet little face, and I wrote kind of this raw, um, almost like a journal entry right there on sure. social media. And the next morning, I saw my Instagram account flood to about 40,000 followers. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do with this now? Mm. And my wow. inbox was wow. just flooded with um, s- mostly sweet comments and messages from other families that ha- you know are walking the same path as we are with this port wine stain. Okay. And um, and I felt almost this pressure of like, oh, I got to respond to everybody, even though it would be hundreds a day. And wow. so I would try to set a time, you know, to to do that, but. Um, God just kind of, that's how the door really opened was right there after wow. having my, my son mm-hmm. and been given this small platform. Um, and so anyway, I'm sorry for the long introduction, but that's kind of what, how God yeah. has, yeah. you know, led me to, I guess, where we're at now. Um, well, I think it's actually helpful in a couple different ways, because in one sense, you think about social media in general, and you typically think this is a place where I try to like force myself into getting a platform, yeah. force myself into relevance, get myself- Make it in, happen. Make it happen. Oh, get yeah. it in yeah. front of people. Yeah. like um, Become popular. Exactly. Yes. Like yes. Versus what you're telling us is that really the Lord has kind of laid this in your lap. You went to bed with 5,000 followers, you wake up with thousands upon thousands more, and you're looking at it more as a stewardship. Yeah. You're seeing everything within the context of like whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for the glory mm-hmm. of God. And God has entrusted with you you something unique, and you're trying to leverage it for the greatest good. It's kind of what I'm hearing. Oh yes, absolutely. And so that's really awesome. Yeah, it's been. And again, like when I say it more mature in my faith, it's helped me discern with social media a lot. Um, you know, things have changed, as we all know, so much with social media. You're, you're looking at, you're getting your news from social media, you know, mm-hmm. and right. um, there's so many different aspects to it. And there's a lot of good. And that's why I hope to bring that or I hope that I am bringing some encouragement for people as being a Christian. It's not a bad thing to be on social media by mm. any means. But what I've learned and what God has been teaching me is to how to discern more. I need to read scripture every day to like, when I see a post, this is just kind of a funny thing, but I could see a post and I'll like it because it's like a cute picture, but then I'll read the caption of what they've said. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I don't like that. That's wrong. You know, and, and people are getting, are, are are like digging for things and they're finding that you're liking certain things and they're like, oh, let's can't, you know, you guys talked about cancel culture and there's, the self-love culture. There's the Ali Stuckey, great, you know, host on, I 
love listening to her podcast, but she talks about the mommy, the toxic mommy culture, Mm. which as a mom, I could find myself getting into that so much where it's kind of a normal thing to like say some pretty harsh things about your own kids. Like, oh, they're brats. They're just giving me this hard time. And you're kind of you know, just even to about your husband and where she's saying, you know, and like, almost empowered to do so right. and encourage. And that that's okay. Right. And, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And she just did an interview with Albert Moeller, which was a phenomenal interview because he talked about, he was talking about social media and he said, it's all about language control. Mm. So you're on there and that's where the discerning comes in because you're reading things like, let's just say abortion. And now it's, it's not abortion. It's you know, women's health care or so it's being read softer and it mm-hmm. sounds okay. And as a Christian, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that sure. But that's where you have to be careful. Cause that's, you know, we don't. Right. Right. So. Absolutely. So, so bring it into maybe this past, I don't know, six months or so. Tell us how you're viewing your activity uh, what you're posting, and, and and maybe even turn that into some like um, you know advice for the Christian. Uh, not necessarily even with a platform such as yours, but just interacting on social media. Um, how are you thinking it through and using it these days? Well, like I said, it's it's changed over the years because as I've matured more, I feel like I've said that so many times. <laughs> but as I've matured more Praise in my God. faith, yeah, <laughs> I believe that. Um, it's it. I look at it differently, and I go through it differently. I have even unfollowed certain accounts because I've just learned that I don't need to see that. And, um, I've tried, I'm, like I said, I've, I'm pretty, I'm very open on social media and I, I'd say a lot of it is posting about my children, but I get very excited and very bold about posting scripture and about posting sermons of, especially this now concerning, which I've had so many, uh, messages on people, from around the world that are listening and they're just like, this is great. Like we need this. We need more of this. And so I, and I've actually lost a lot of followers, (laughs) not because of that. (laughs) That sounded horrible coming (laughs) right after that. No, No, but over the years, like after having Leo, I think, you know, at first there were a lot of them were just like, Oh, this sweet little boy I want to follow. But then I think the more they're like, okay, I don't need to follow this. Well, you're being girl bold anymore. with your faith, right? You're being yes, bold in your, your you know. There's a way to maintain your followers, but that's a whole other piece to what's so encouraging right. about what you're doing. Is it's like, no, I'm going to stand for Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and and to your kind of maturing comment, that that's probably the way your social media direction mm-hmm. has gone as well, yeah. and so it, it makes sense. But yeah. to those who stick around, right, they're getting access to yes some pretty great resources, yes. uh, not the least of which is the gospel, right, in various forms. I mean, honestly, I was telling my talking to my husband the other night, and we're we're watching the Marvel movies in chronological order. By the way, pretty. I'm cool sure thing. that was your idea, I right? Act- <laughs> was that your idea? No, it sounds like a husband's <laughs> idea for sure. <laughs> it's gonna be great, honey. <laughs> but, Date nights, all the Marvel movies. Uh, but we we were watching one the other night, and I paused and I said, because I was we were talking a little bit about um, coming on here and stuff, and what I, you know, wanted to talk about, and I said, you know, I said, this, I don't know what. Honest, like God just kind of, like I'm a stay-at-home mom, getting ready to have four, literally babies in my mm-hmm. house because my four-year-old is not a big help yet. <laughs> he can maybe right, hand right. me a diaper. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I don't go out and um, get to. I mean, I go out with my girlfriend and stuff, but I don't go do a ton publicly or anything. And God's given me this little platform mm-hmm. where I can somewhat be a witness bearer and you know, preach the gospel a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And even just in my little stories and that feels good. Hmm. I mean, that's, it's not a lot, but I can do it from my home while I'm trying to disciple these children Yeah, <laughs> and, sure. and sharing that too with other moms, I think, um, can be helpful. Um, it, and encouraging as well. I love them. that. Yeah, yeah what I'm that. hearing is just, um, and I know you want to take us, maybe we can conclude uh-huh. here, take us to the word here, but, uh, you know, if you're going to use social media, particularly to seek any, to seek to influence people in some way, be distinctly Christian and be boldly Christian, yes. right? Yes. Um, and just, and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. But, but the, the last thing these days a Christian really can af- afford to do is to not do both of those things. You maybe can do other things, and maybe mm-hmm. it's going to be a business for some people, and okay, granted, you're seeking to... Not against that, but be distinctly Christian and boldly Christian because there, um, there's so much urgency 
these days. And and gosh, the social media stuff flies so fast, right? I mean, people, it just it comes and goes so quickly. You need to grab people's attention for the gospel yeah. to to the degree that you can in the kind of corner of the digital world God's given you to make an imprint, regardless of how big or small that is. That's mm-hmm. the way I'm sort of summarizing. Yeah. yeah, and I think yeah. especially like some people look at the circumstance they're in and go, man, I just don't have that many outlets mm-hmm. to be able to share. And of course, like you said, and praise God, you've got your uh, discipleship missions field right in your <laughs> yeah, own home, yeah. right? But yeah. but on top of that, just going, oh, you're leveraging something. You're being very strategic about this stage of your life to make much of the gospel where, say, in 20 years, mm-hmm. your lifestyle is going to change mm-hmm. and it's going to give you different opportunities. But in this season, you can look back and go, man... I leverage what the Lord had entrusted to me for the greatest possible good yeah. in that moment. And um, there's a contentment in that, you know, there's a peace in that, mm-hmm. that you're leveraging that for God's yeah. glory in this yeah. season. Amen. And if I can, I have a verse I would love to share. This is something that, I don't know, just came to my heart a couple of days ago. It's Ephesians 4, 29. I'm sure you're very familiar with it, but let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such is good for building up as fits for the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. That's and good. I just thought even, yeah. you know, since we're talking about social media, that's what I really as Christians, we should really go in with whether you have someone combative or not, or it's just a good conversation, but What a great verse for social media. Seriously. (laughs) Ephesians 4.29. Awesome. Thanks for bringing it home uh, with that. That really is encouraging. And we're just uh, delighted to have you. Seriously, Chantel, it's really, it's great to see, um, you know, you grow to that point of maturity in your faith. Mm -hmm. And as you trust the Lord to just uh, be a faithful steward of whatever he gives for you to do, doing it for his glory and with all your might is just really, really great. So thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so good. You've been listening to Doxa Logic, a podcast by Doxa Church in Rockland, California. To learn more, visit doxachurch.net.